Our top story this Friday, during the second of two debates this week in Miami, Democratic presidential candidates battled it out over a range of issues, including health care, the economy, immigration, and race. Among the highlights, California Senator Kamala Harris challenged frontrunner Joe Biden on his record on race and school busing, which the former vice president defended. And Governor Steve Bullock hit the airwaves again, but this time in Manchester, New Hampshire. The hour-long event covered topics from the Supreme Court to health care and veterans suicide. New Hampshire is big on the campaign trail because of its positioning in primaries and its position as the second caucus right after Iowa. Closer to home, the Yellowstone River is shifting course as it moves through Billings, taking with it land from a trailer park and a family home. As Q2's David J reports, the family of four is now pleading with the neighbor as they watch their home literally fall into the water. You never know what the Yellowstone is going to do since it's a free-flowing river. The Yellowstone River has changed course and is threatening Joel and Jolene Borg's home. It is very, very scary. <laughs> um, you don't know if your house is going to be there. Part of the house has gone in. That room is our hot tub room, the greenhouse before, basically a dirt floor. And so just the dirt fell into the river along with half of the wall. Before the river took part of the house, it took part of the Borg's land. When we bought the house, it actually has three acres. Right now, we're probably on a little under three quarters of an acre. So we have the rest of it on the other side of the river. They have all the permits in place and just received the plans and the estimate of $270,000 from the engineering firm. And the engineers are telling you that it has to go from that cottonwood tree to that point for it to work. That is correct, at least efficiently. The Borgs would have to pay close to $70,000, and the rest would come from the trailer park owner to fix his land. That could have been taken care of in um, 2015. He had the permit, and he just didn't want to spend the amount to get it fixed. It is very frustrating <laughs> just to know that it could be fixed. It just breaks my heart that we have to deal with this now as it is. The river may be getting closer to the home, but for now the Borgs feel fairly safe, but they do want to get it taken care of before the runoff next spring. In Billings, David J, MTN News. And Q2 called the trailer park owner who lives out of state to find out his plans for the land, but we have not heard back from him. Continuing our coverage, for more than a century, the Little Shell tribe of Chippewa Indians has pushed and pleaded for federal recognition. And now that push moved the bill for its recognition forward. As part of an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, the recognition bill moved through the Senate Thursday. It has come close in years past and was even poised to pass at the end of the last congressional session until it was blocked. That forced both of Montana's senators, John Tester and Steve Daines, to reintroduce the bill as Congressman Greg Gianforte worked to pass similar legislation in the House. Federal recognition is crucial for the Little Shell tribe because it will allow its people to govern themselves. The Little Shell tribe is headquartered in Great Falls and has more than 5,400 members across Montana. Well, Montanans who buy health insurance on the individual market will be paying less next year. That's a first since Obamacare took hold six years ago. The proposed average reductions for policies sold by Blue Cross, the Montana Health Co-op, and Pacific Source range from 8% to 14%. State Auditor Matt Rosendale says the decline is partly because of a new state reinsurance pool. Health insurers agreed, saying the reinsurance pool will cover high-cost claims and reduce costs for all customers. About 50,000 Montanans have these policies, and 80 to 90 percent of them get federal subsidies to help pay for the cost. Yet, annual deductibles for most of these policies remain high, anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars. Still, the CEO for the health co-op says this part of Obamacare continues to provide coverage for many who didn't have it before. You have a state like Wyoming, where there's one insurance company, the rates are sky high, and uh, for states like Idaho, Montana. Uh, in a number of states where there's competition, uh, it's actually working pretty well the last year or two. There's a lot of turmoil for three or four years, but the last year or two, we've actually seen uh, the, the, the system working with rate reductions or at least stability. The rates for the 2020 policies will be reviewed by Rosendale's office and finalized later this summer. A hero's welcome for a Wyoming Korean War vet 
finally making it home after nearly 70 years. Corporal Demerit Martson Kirtley was a native of Casey, Wyoming. On Thursday, his remains were flown from Hawaii to Billings, then escorted by the Patriot Guard and members of law enforcement back home to Wyoming, where we're told the streets were lined with people waiting to welcome him back. But it has been a long journey. Kirtley was reported missing in action in December 1950, last seen in North Korea. The remains were among more than 400 others who could not be identified that North Korea turned over in 1954. Finally, in May of 2018, Corporal Kirtley was positively identified from a DNA kit that his late brother, also a Korean War vet, had given more than a decade ago. Only 20 when he died, you know. And, his, and when I read about the horrible war and what he went through, it, it really made me sad that, you know, he didn't die in vain though if it you know if his life affects one person to let us know that you know freedom comes at a high price to many and not just the soldiers but the family as well you know that maybe his life wasn't in vain maybe he maybe you know my my own grandchildren and maybe some of the children along the way will realize that you know the the price we pay for freedom that a public visitation will be held this morning from 9.45 to 12.45 at Kane Funeral Home in Sheridan. Corporal Kirtley will then be laid to rest beside his parents in the Casey Cemetery on Saturday. If you're heading to the big 4th of July fireworks show in Laurel next week, well, you may want to leave yourself a little extra time to get there. Of course, there is always a huge crowd, but there's also some construction on the West Laurel Interchange that could slow things down even more. The Montana Department of Transportation says construction will halt at 3 p.m. Wednesday, July 3rd and resume on Monday, July 8th. However, traffic on 990 will still be reduced to two-way traffic, so alternate routes are encouraged getting on and off the interstate. Also, West Railroad is closed from west of South 8th to Frank Road, and Shea Road is closed to traffic as well.